good to be here tonight. I can't keep the smiles off my face with all these many blessings I'm hearing tonight. Um, I wanted to sing this song for my Lord and my special friend and my sister Peg. I know a man who can. I can take a heart that's broken, make it over again, but I know a man who can. I can take a soul that's sin sick, wash it white as the snow. But I know a man who can. Some call him Savior, the Redeemer of all men. I call him Jesus, for he's my dearest friend. If you think that no one loves you and your life is out of hand, well, I know a man who can. I can't walk upon the water or calm a raging sea. But I know a man who can. I can cause blind eyes to open or the lame to walk again. But I know a man who can. Some call him Savior. The Redeemer of all men I call him Jesus For he's my dearest friend If you think that no one loves you And your life is out of hand Well, I know a man who can well I know a man who can thank you, thank you Lord yeah I know a man who can that's right mm -hmm. We're getting a hodgepodge tonight, so, and that's great. We can do that on Sunday nights. We spoke this morning in the uh, book of Esther. I'm not going to take you there, but if you were here this morning, you remember uh, how the Word of God, we, we know that uh, we read in the book of Esther for such a time as this. And, and we've seen a lot of parallels this morning in the book of Esther for the day that you and I live in. Uh, we see, a, we see, we live in a day of there's a lot of God's people that are not, not found in His will, although they are His people, but not found in His will, and that will happen. And uh, some people will not take that treasure of salvation and use it to glorify God uh, to the utmost in their lives. Some will take that treasure of salvation and barely get by, but nonetheless, they'll have salvation, Amen. and uh, because the blood of Christ. Is, 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 is has the power to cover all sin. And uh, that's the sin yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So when one truly trusts Jesus Christ as their Savior. But we see this, we're going to see this evening that <clears throat> for such a time as this, and I'm going to share some testimony with you. I'm going to try not to meander because I didn't wire up. But, well, I, never mind. <laughs> And, uh, you know, sometimes I feel like, uh, as, as a pastor, I feel like I'm in, a, in, the, in the cockpit of a, a jet looking out the window, just soaring over different areas. And you know how you look down and you see, it looks like checkerboard squares if you've ever had the opportunity to fly. And uh, as, it, as it looks like checkerboard squares, uh, nothing makes a lot of sense to you until you start descent, your descent. And then you can begin to find 
uh, and recognize uh, what's below you and what surrounds you. Being a pastor is much like that. Uh, for, for a long time, Lord, show us, show me what our niche for you is. Show me what our niche for you is. And all I know, it's preaching the gospel, and I know it's teaching the gospel, and I know it's loving one another, and I know it's taking the gospel outside the doors of the church. I know those things. That's, those are pretty much basic of what every church should be doing. Amen? Amen. Uh, we know that we're in the last days, and not every church does that. But with doing that, we understand that uh, the name above all names is Jesus Christ. Amen. And, and as we understand that name above all names, we understand also that for such a time as, as this, and my vision, spiritual vision, uh, when, I, when I see what the Lord has done with our world, with our country, our nation, and with us, and, and it's like a big blender, it's like a big mixer, if you will, and uh, you know, some, some things don't look so good. You know, y'all, a lot of you like hot dogs, but you wouldn't want to drink the hot dog water. You know, <laughs> but, but, but as I watch what God blends and mixes for you and I in his providential will, you see good things, bad things happen, and, and I get challenged by those things. And, I, and the book of Esther this morning just has so many uh, uh, messages for such a time like this that I see that we are a minority, you and I as Christians in this nation, Christianity we are a minority. True Christians, true born-again believers in Jesus Christ are a minority. There's a lot of people that say they're Christians, but they're not. Uh, not by the standards of the Word of God, which is our, the Word of God's judging them. I'm not. That's right. um, and um, we see that. But, but what I want to share with you tonight is, is my heart and how this vision that the Lord has given me. And I talk about a materialistic thing such as a van, which I think I got around to show most of you the pictures of the van that we're um, going to get tomorrow. Well, with, with that is a long time coming, and what is our strength, Lord? What is it that we would do? Um, Lord, I, can't, I don't have a choir director, so it's obviously not the music ministry. Uh, no one feels led to do any of those things, so... What is it, Lord, that are, is going to be our strength? What is it? And, and so I began to watch, and I began to get excited as I see this culminate. You know, when for years past, as we're down, in the mission, uh, as we're down doing our missions conference, and we're putting together the Word of God, and I'm watching, I'm watching the flock, and I'm interacting with everybody, and I'm seeing a strength, a strength in God uh, through His people, that people get excited about doing that in this church and, and then we get excited about praying over their scriptures and getting those scriptures out the Lord has taken that foundation and built upon that uh, all of the, the eight months of work and planning last year to go to the National Law Enforcement Memorial Week and to pass out 12,000 John and Romans to the people there and to minister to those people uh, out of this house was such a blessing um, to be able to do that, we made those, we, we put those together here, and then they went to Washington from here. So God was showing me something. This is what your people can do, he says. This is what my people can do, he says. And, and, and he begins to really, really put that on my heart. And I'm, it's like, well, Lord, you know, we could do more of this. Uh, I feel as though he wants us to do more of this. We were able to to pray over, give to, and be a part of the uh, inaugurational copies of the John and Romans and to be able to go over there on uh, three different trips, two to make, to make arrangements and provisions to do that, and then go there during the presidential inauguration and stand in the streets of Washington, D.C. and hand out 50,000 of these. Amen. And then every one of the Congress, all of the Congress and Senate are getting one of these also. Uh, what a blessing that is for such a time as this when Christianity is a minority, 91% of the Congress claims to be Christians. That's the most since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Amen. For such a time as this, the Word of God, we know the great falling away. And we're not to be swayed by that. We need to be excited by that. We need to be excited that there's that there's millions of people carrying protest signs, wagging their fingers at 
Christianity right now and at the principles of Christianity and that, that, we, that God, through his providential will, has put a man in the White House of the United States of America, whether he's a saved man or not, I'm not dictating that and I'm not following a man. I'm following a God that put him there. Amen. Much like we saw this morning in, our, in the book of Esther. Much like when we watched God put a man there that paves the way for God's people. For God's people. As we stood in Washington, D.C., we stood in a vacuum. We were untouched. We were unfettered. We were not disrupted one second. Praise God. And on the left, outside of the inaugural area where we were at, they're burning up a limousine, putting firebombs off in it. They're breaking out the windows at McDonald's and Starbucks and the riot police, and they're throwing the stones. The gas cannons are going off. Recognize that familiar sound, home sweet home. <laughs> There's just ever so slight, ever so slight. The forecast is saying it's supposed to be raining cats and dogs. There's ever so slight of a mist coming down. And I'm standing there going, oh no, that's going to hold the gas down. We're going to get it. And the wind goes and takes it away. And over on this side is another set of protesters that aren't as quite as violent as those over there. And all the time, all that's going on, we are surrounded by police officers, National Guardsmen. It's like a big horseshoe. Behind us is the inauguration. And, on the other, and we're just surrounded. And we're just out there giving out the word of God. Amen. Hand over fist hand over fist, in such a time as this. As I was doing that, and if you could put yourself in my shoes for one minute, I'm there going, wow, we're, unf we're unfazed by any of this. This is the saints of God's prayers being heard. Uh, this is an anointment upon this work by the hand of God that we're doing this and nothing bad is happening to us. And our leaders, our government leaders are saying, welcome, come, welcome, come. Unheard of. Yes. Unheard of. The first time I've ever experienced it. There's no doubt in my heart what God is going to use the New Testament Baptist Church for. It's the actual assembling and distribution of his written word. Amen. And with that, the Lord has provided us a van. We looked and looked and looked and looked, talked and talked. We had a meeting with the officers the other night. This is something I've been praying for for a long, long time. And, uh, and, and even when our foolish hearts, when I say that, I don't mean that in a bad, beat us up way. I'm just simply, when, when Deacon Woodard and I both thought, uh-oh, <clears throat> we can't beat this deal that, Internet, that Enterprise just offered us on Friday night that I sent to Brother Paul. Brother Paul even sends me back, or we talk, I can't remember how it went, but he says, I don't, I don't see Sarshone being able to beat that deal even if they have one. Well, I know that they don't have one because I've already checked the Internet, and there's not one there. But he gets there, and guess what? They call up to the Ford dealership. They have one that they just acquired. It hasn't been put on the internet yet. <laughs> you know, the world would call that chance. The world would call that coincidence. They would call that luck. I call that the providential will of God. Amen. That tells me that, that we're doing what God wants us to do. And that tells me, just like that property we acquired next door by the hand of God, that even though we knew that God wanted us to pursue it, God was going to do it his way. He wasn't going to do it my way. And just like the property next door, you know, with the tax, with the title and the closing fees and the purchase of $100 and then the other $792, it was $892. And then just a couple of weeks later, here comes a lady from First Energy who they want, a, they want an easement granted across the front to trim the, tree, the trees to protect the, that we don't have out there. <laughs> and I said, well, we don't have any trees. Well, that's okay. We'll pay you for the easement anyhow. Just in case you ever have trees. Uh, and plus it gives us access to get down through there when we do work on our power lines. So here's $1,200. <laughs> you, you can't out give God. And then in, with the van on Saturday, I told you I got up feeling bad on Saturday morning <clears throat> with this stuff. And uh, I'm going to self-medicate. I'm going to the gun show. <clears throat> 
my wife says, you going by yourself? I said, I am. Just, you know, me and God are going to run off to the gun show. Praise the Lord, pass the ammunition. Amen. So, so I'm at the gun show, and, and Brother Paul's calling me, and he's texting me, and you, I, I know you heard this this morning, but it's worth telling again. And, and the great deal that we had, these vans, brand, these vans new are anywhere between 38.5 to 42,000 something. And uh, Enterprise had offered us a deal late on Friday evening uh, for 29.799, I believe it was, uh, and uh, on a 2016. And uh, Brother Paul, I think he felt the same way I did. That's, that's not going to be beat from all the prices that we've been looking at and what we've seen. That's coming in almost $10,000 or so, ten to $12,000 less than, and so on Sarshone, He's, he's sending me pictures blowing up my phone once he gets this. And he's talked to the owners down there, and they've offered a deal that can't be ref They've offered a deal that only God could be in. Amen. First of all, they didn't have one, now they have one. <laughs> and then second of all, they said, and I think the price, I wrote it down somewhere in here again. We get three years, 36,000 miles, five-year guarantee on the drivetrain. Uh, it has 3,100 miles on it. It's a 2016 12 passenger for 25,783.50. It's amazing, totally amazing. Not only is it, not only that, but for two years they give us free oil changes and tire rotations for two years. <laughs> yeah, he he certainly is. He certainly is. But he, but I say all that to say this: not to gloat in what we're going to get, but to gloat in what we're going to do. Amen. And and because what we're going to do is we're going to be working for God. Um, that van, I will tell you now, I don't, you know, it may be used for these things, but it's not, it's not something that's going to be primarily used to run out and pick people up. That's not, I don't believe that's what the Lord gave it to us for. I believe he gave it to us to get the word of God out. Amen. Um, it, it's a 12 passenger van. We will pick people up if they, if, if, if we can, and if, and if there's need, we'll do that at certain times. We'll, we'll use it for church ministry and church business. Amen. Uh, but we'll also, but the main thing the Lord has placed on my plate is this right here. I was, the, the Lord blessed me with the ability to be able to get into open doors in Washington, D.C. during the National Law Enforcement Memorial Week. We have sent those, Seedline has uh, uh, done great, great work over there for the Lord. We've been able to get these out to major cities within the United States of America when there's been officers who have been killed, Dallas. Baton Rouge, those places, and, and our law enforcement memorial is going to be this. We're going to get, we're going to get those from seed line, and now we have a van in which we can get them in, and now we have a way to get them here, and now we have a way to go meet them halfway to get these things, and now we have a plate, and we'll have a place to keep them here, and we will, we will begin a ministry out of this church to the law enforcement community all over this nation. Amen. This will be the hub. Thank God. This will be the hub. So guess what God needs? He needs workers. He needs workers. And to give you an example, for the law enforcement memorial week, that's, that's in May. That's one time a year. How do we do that? We reach out to like-minded churches as us in different areas. And we, once we find out where they have their ceremonies in different parts of the country, and we reach out to them and say, Pastor, would your folks be willing to do a work if we get you the scriptures and we tell you the location and the date, day, and time where it's at? Would your church be willing to work for God? What pastor wouldn't want to do that? Amen. What pastor wouldn't want to send his people out where they're having a law enforcement memorial ceremony with the citizens of the community and begin to pass out the word of God with a nice commemorative copy of the John and Romans to that particular event? There's, there's, there's unlimited doors for us to go for the Lord with that. Then what, what about when, when such as... God forbid what we know because there's been 165 officers killed in 2016 across this nation. You see the funerals, the processions, the citizens that are lined up, the families that are grieving, the comrades that would all love to have one of those commemorative John and Romans in their hands. Yeah. 
and we get them there. If they're close enough, we send teams in a van. And it's an emergency thing. You have three days usually. There's going to be the funeral. You get there. You get teams. Here's what we do. We're going to need people to, to, to work the phone, to come into the office and sit down and work the phone. And once they become familiar with it, they can do it from home. If they have a cell phone, can make free long-distance calls. We're going to need people to do that. We're, we may be, I'm not sure, we're, we still have to talk about the new th thin blue line cover coming out for the John and Romans that Brother Keith Davidson and I have been working on. And those will be to do at leisure to be able to get to every law enforcement agency in the United States of America with those. Okay. It doesn't have to be upon the death of an officer or a memorial. It's something that you can get in their hands th anytime. So what an exciting ministry that is. And that's what we're looking at that van to be used for, to get the word of God out as a primary use. Yes, we can use it for other things when the need arises, but I hope you feel challenged by that. I hope you feel excited about that. I hope you want to be a part of that. Um, and be watching, the, um, be watching the bulletin for sign-up sheets, structure on how we're going to do that. And uh, with that, Turn over in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2 with me here real quick. I'm going to be quick. <clears throat> Sorry, that made me Going to be quick. Ephesians chapter 2, and if you look at verse 8 with me, for by grace are you saved through faith in that, what? Not of yourself. Baby, I don't care who you are tonight. <laughs> me first. I don't have a thing to do with my salvation. Nope. <laughs> Not a thing. Nothing. <laughs> Once I've trusted him, that's it. That's it. It's all over. Never will I see hell. Thank Never. You. Never, 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 never. No matter how much I take this off and play with it. <laughs> no matter what this trouble gets you into, I'm not going to see it. Um, for grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God. It's not the gift of Bob. It's the gift of God. Praise the Lord, he gave me a gift. Yeah. Not of works. I can't work for that gift it, it's not what I do that's going to get me that gift or allow me to keep that gift. It's not what I do, and it's not what I don't do. That's right. It's all about what he did. Thank you. Not a works, lest any man should boast, for we are his workmanship. And how, who are we created in? We're created in Christ Jesus unto what? Now think about that for a second. We, we're created in Christ Jesus unto good works. He did the good works, yes, he did. which God hath before ordained that we should walk in the good works that he did. It don't have nothing to do with my good works. It's everything about his good works. They just, the Lord's just telling me, Bob, you walk in my good works. Amen. I did them. You walk in them. Amen? Amen. It's not about... Bob's good works. It's about God's good works. And that's exactly what the scripture tells us there. And what a wonderful gift that is to know that how imperfect I am, my Savior is never imperfect. He's always there for me. Always. We, we walk in all of his good works. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. With the thought and the idea of walking in his good works. If I don't walk in his good works, I'm not going to lose my salvation. You hear me? Let me say that again. If I do not walk in his good works, I don't lose my salvation. I don't get squat for rewards, <laughs> but I'm not going to lose it. Amen? Amen. Um, um, so, so and, and, and that's the wonderful gift. That's the gift. <laughs> it's a gift. See, a gift is something that I can't work for. It's a gift. I can't buy it. It's a gift. I can't work for it. It's a gift. I can't sacrifice for it. It's a gift. I, I, I can't sweat for it. it. It's a gift. My wife can't give it to me. It's a gift. Amen. 
i.e., it's priceless. That's right. It's totally priceless. Totally priceless. My money can't buy it. Christ bought it. And he paid for it. It's priceless. And it's a gift to some slouch like me. Amen. 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 And y'all in there too. (laughs) So with all that in mind, he wants us to walk in his good works, okay? And when we walk in his good works, we get some credit for that. And uh, we don't get an extra blessing of salvation. We don't get born again the second and third time. He's not going to jump up and get on that cross again for us. He did that once. Uh, uh, so, so, so what happens to us is we end up doing this. We look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. For, for we are laborers together with him, aren't we? We are in verse 9. We are when we walk in his good works, we are now laborers together with God. The scripture tells us that. For we are laborers together in verse 9 with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. You hear all those things that we are according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. I came one day to Jesus, and I said, Christ, forgive me. God, forgive me for rejecting your son. I can come to Jesus all day long and say, I can come to God all day long and say, God, man, I believe in you, and I believe that your son Jesus Christ was born of a virgin and he came to this earth and he died on that cross and he rose again on the third day. I I, I believe all that. I haven't made it yet. Something missing. God, forgive me for rejecting that gift. That all-powerful, eternal gift. I've got to confess something. That I've, I've rejected him. And now I no longer reject him. Thanks. Now, I, Jesus, I want you, the one and only who can hold my salvation. You, the one and only who bled and died for me. You, the only one who can give such a gift that I can't be robbed of from anybody. Amen. Not even Satan can have that gift. Amen. He can't take it from me. I can, be, I can kill somebody tomorrow and go to prison, and he can't take it from me. He can't. It's a gift. Because I repented one day. I said, God, forgive me for not believing that He can do it. And that He is the one that did it. And I want Him. That's the repentance that we must have to have eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. And once we have that, no man can take that from us. No man can pluck us from His hand. No man, not even me. Amen. Not even me. Oh, there's these people that will talk about, well, oh, Johnny, he shot and killed himself. He's going to hell for sure. Show me that in the Scriptures. Amen. It's not there. It's not there. It's not there. I'll tell you firsthand, I know people that I've knelt with an altar at the altar with that murdered somebody that came and knelt down at the altar and trusted Jesus Christ and cried like a baby as I prayed with them. And then subsequently killed themselves. And I'll tell you, I know that they trusted Christ. Did they? I'll tell you another thing. By the word of God and by the authority of the word of God, they are not going to get much reward in heaven. But I will tell you, they'll be there to get not much reward. Amen. That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God that's calling us to get his word out to the rest of the world and carry out a great commission. That's the kind of God saying, you take my money and you use it to get the word of God out. 
That's, what he's, that's the kind of God we serve. We can, we can build on this, uh, this foundation, this foundation that he tells us. He says in verse 11, For no other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. I can't lay a foundation on me. I can't say I'm going to be good enough today to keep your salvation and bad enough tomorrow to lose it. I can't lay a foundation. That's the only one. That's the only one. Every man's work shall be made, well, let's go to verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble. Listen, if you're the best Christian and you're the best child of God that you can possibly be, and you build all these fancy things on, the, on your salvation, on the foundation of God, man, are you going to get rewards. Man, are you going to be kings and priests and leaders in the millennial kingdom when we all come back to the face of this earth with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ wearing white riding horses? It's going to be a wonderful time. And for those that don't, you're going to be shining my shoes. <laughs> but you're going to be there. You're going to be there. And, and that's the great thing. And, and if in, in verse 12, now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. You see that? You see that? Didn't say every man's work is not going to be made manifest because you got kicked out of your salvation. You're not there no more. Every man that builds on that foundation. You hear me? Every saved person, every person that stands on the foundation of Jesus Christ, our work will be made manifest. It will manifest itself. Every man. God never does this. You're on my foundation of salvation. Yeah, you're off of it now. He never does that. Never does that. And that's exciting. Because that means no matter how much of a schlep I am, I don't get kicked off the foundation. But, but with this, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, what's he going to get, folks? Who's going to give it to him? You see, it doesn't come down to it doesn't come down to you have no chance to get a reward. He's talking about his people that stand on his foundation. You get a reward, or maybe you don't. If any man's work in verse 15 shall be burned, hey man, uh, uh, excuse the vernacular, but your work stunk. <laughs> You, see, you know, you did all this for yourself. Oh, you're my child. You trusted me as your Savior. You asked me. You repented. You come to me. And I saved you. And, and, and you're forever saved. But your work after that, you stink. <laughs> There's a lot of Christians that stink. And they're going to learn that. But that's what he's saying. If any man's work shall be, what, burned? Look at that next thing. He shall suffer what? Does it say he's done? He's cooked? He's going to hell? There's no salvation? No. He says, you, you're going you to lose your work. It's going to be burned. You're going to suffer loss. But he himself, read this with me, class. He himself shall. There, you notice what? You notice something? There's no discretion in there. None whatsoever. It's not that. Sorry, John. You might be. You, you know what? After all, your works get burned up and you're standing there naked looking ugly and everything. You, 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 might, you might be saved. You might. That's not what he says. He said, you shall. You shall be saved. I'll, all your works, every bad thing you've done on top of that, you're not getting the rewards for. Your works were for yourself. You didn't do squat for me. You turned your back on me. You didn't do any of those things. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Amen. <clears throat> what a gift that is. Amen. What a gift. But you know what? That's a gift God wants going out this door. Yes. He wants a gift that every missionary is doing. He wants a gift that every single one of us are doing. Every single one of us. He wants us to be able to do these things. All can build on this foundation by working to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's our challenge tonight. That is our challenge. Not just to hear it. 
but to do it. Amen? Amen? And as we do it, we need phone research workers. We need people that can sit down for a couple of hours a week, come into the office on a Tuesday and Wednesday morning, sit down, get on our computer when you use the internet, get on our telephones, work as teams, I don't care, have fun, bring donuts, drink coffee, have fun in working for the Lord, and do these things to reach out, to find things that's going to get our people that are going to be doing such things as emergency planning. Oh my, the officer in Pennsylvania was killed in the line of duty. It's not that far away. we got a van. We've got teams. We've got the scriptures. Let's go. Amen. Let's go. Let's get the word out there. Oh, if it's too far away and we just can't do it, guess what? Let's get those scriptures put together. Let's get them in the van. Let's get on the phone. Let's call the, let's call the Baptist churches over there. Hey, can you get these out over there at the funeral if we get them shipped to you? And let's get them over to Akron to UPS. Boom! And ship them over there. Amen. And that's what we do. But we need people that will work, that will facilitate these things. And it doesn't take that much. It doesn't take that much to do a great work for the Lord. Do a great work. Those are the challenges. We're going to need distribution teams. These are the challenges. And this is just the start out of the New Testament Baptist Church. Amen. This little church on the corner of Maine and Morgan. Amen. And that's the message tonight. We're going to sing a quick closing song. Let's just sing. Stay there, Brother Adolph. Everybody stay where you're at. Let's just, you know, all, you all know I like Amazing Grace, first and last verse, okay? Oh.